Look at his god. <laughs> I missed it. So I just... <laughs> I wasn't laughing. Did you fuck me? Hello everyone, I'm uh, here with uh, Nicolas Saitopoulos and uh, Marcelo Lage, both student uh, college student athletes here at Coastal. Hi, I'm Nicolas Saitopoulos and I'm from South Africa. Hi, I'm Marcelo Lage and I'm from Massachusetts. Okay, um, starting the video I'd like to ask you guys a bit about your background, so where are you guys from, uh, what did you do back home to get here and what was the experience once you got here. So. Um, Nick, you're from South Africa, so surely it's been a long process to get here. You want to explain to us how that happened and what are the steps you had to go through in order to get here to the US? Yeah, so um, first an agency came to our school um, just to explain the whole college, American college lifestyle. Um, and then through them I got in touch with another agency. They explained to me the, the process of how I would come across um, that I would have to take SATs and um, record a highlight video, obviously, because I wanted to, to play soccer. Um, so I had to submit all of that, and then it was just a waiting game, waiting for universities to contact me, um, and then picking the right school. <laughs> and uh, what about you, Marcel? Like, di definitely it's different for like uh, an American an American guy. It's a different process. So after high school, sure, you've been in contact with. Uh, College coaches, how does it happen? How do you get to college? Yeah, for sure. Um, being an American student is definitely a lot easier than international, just because I went to a small prep school in New England, and the main focus of that is to basically go to college out of that. So they, they give you SAT prep, um, they give you courses to take so that you can take the next step in college. And in terms of getting recruited, like a lot of Amer a lot of college coaches are watching you play in high school, even uh, academy, which is basically club soccer and those type of schools. So. It's a lot more opportunity to get seen and they can actually watch you in person. So the, the steps to play college soccer as, a, as a American player is a lot easier than an international player. For sure. So now that uh, we got into, into the conversation, a bit about the lifestyle once you get here in college. What, uh, what you guys, I want to ask you guys, what do you think it's, how different is the lifestyle between a regular student in a college, in an American college, and our lifestyle, so a lifestyle of a student athlete? Starting with unique, what are your thoughts? Um, I think we just have much longer days, so most of us have at least one training session a day, sometimes two, like for most of us it's two. Um, that means that we kind of have to structure our day around um, class, training, and then having enough time to do homework later when we come back. And then obviously we want to have some form of a social life too, so it's kind of just time management is really important. For sure. And Marcelo, like you surely have a lot of friends around the around the country who are also like normal students, regular students coming out coming out of high school. Uh, even talking to them, what's what? What are your thoughts about the difference of in lifestyle between a student and a student athlete? Uh, yeah, I mean, Nick basically said um, you kind of revolve your uh, schedule around uh, lifts and practice times. So where as a regular student, you can schedule classes whenever, and basically have the have the whole day to schedule classes and. Um, you basically have less free time, it's as simple as that. You're traveling to games sometimes and you're missing classes, so that's also a big one. Um, you're trying to catch up on work and you have a lot less free time. Uh, let's get into academics a bit right now. Um, what are your suggestions for people watching right now? How to balance academics and a flat schedule and uh, in the best way in order to get the best out of it? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so um, I think, like I said earlier, time management is really important if you leave your, your tasks last minute then it can be a problem because you're, you're still having to train and go to games and stuff so if you plan your, your homework and your work throughout the week then I think you, you have enough time whereas a student maybe you can't get away with leaving stuff um, kind of last minute because you have the most of the day to, to do the work wherever you don't. For sure and uh, Marshall what do you think the athletics affect your academics is they have a big impact on your schedule wise, grades wise, if if it does it all, what what you think? Yeah, I mean for sure, like if you have a homework assignment due at five the next day and you have practice for three hours, you have to get it done before practice. Whereas if you didn't have that practice time, you probably could work on it a little bit more. So it's just a lot of planning and a lot of uh, doing work the night before it's actually due. And in terms of grades, say if you miss a class a couple of times or miss a lab, it's obviously gonna affect how you 
how you do in a test, but you just have to get the extra help and seek out uh, some extra study methods. For sure. And um, getting the topics of in the topic of uh, social media, uh, is social media a hot topic for a student athlete? Is it required from your team to sponsor, to promote the team, uh, the trainings, the games? Is it required of you to keep a clean profile in order for, for the program safety and like? Uh, what, what are the requirements and how do you set up your social medias? How do, do you manage them? Um, yeah, so you definitely have to, to keep a clean profile because you're representing the, the school at all times when you're a student athlete. Um, so you, you'd want to have a, a clean profile with, with no like um, going like out or photos of you going out or alcohol in your hand, stuff like that. Um, you also then want to be um, focusing or like let's say you want to be a professional. So there might be people that are looking at your profile and you also want to be making sure then that you have a, a profile that other people would be willing to look into. For sure, Marcelo, you, what do you think about that? Have you ever heard of people getting in trouble, having issues with this type of topic and what you think about yeah, keeping a clean profile? I mean, yeah, you're, you're representing a team in university, so you wouldn't want to be posting anything that you think is uh, going to get you in trouble. And most of the time, you just try to stick to uh, pictures of your family, friends, and even some pictures of you playing your sport and not to post anything that would get you in trouble in the long run. For sure. So talking about uh, student athletes, surely the goal is for some of them is to keep playing after college, but some of them they just the goal is just really to get a degree in order to get uh, a job afterwards. Um, what is it like in the real business world? Uh, in the real world, do you think being a student athlete, Nick, is a, is an advantage? Uh, once you get in the real world, you have, you you are seen in a different type of way from people that are actually hiring in companies. Or is it just the same as being a student? Um, Sorry, guys. I, I think that it's it, it can be an advantage because, as I was talking about with time management, I think when you go into the real world, obviously your your day is surrounded by just your main focus is your job, and you have you have so much more work to do than you would in college. So I think the fact that we can balance so many different things is a big advantage. But at the same time, maybe normal students can put more effort into getting internships and networking and stuff like that to get a job afterwards. So I think there's advantages to, to both. Well, what do you think, Marcelo? Do you, like, uh, even being in America your whole life, you surely have seen this happen. What do you think about this and about your future after college? Uh, I mean, Nick basically, up to his question, he hit the nail on the head. Um, a lot, I mean, for a student athlete, they're going to value time management and, and how you kind of balance academics and, and being an athlete in college. But at the same time, like Nick said, maybe a regular student may have more qualifications than you in the real world and they might value that a little bit more because they have more time to do an internship or get some hands-on experience in, in a certain field that they're in. But I mean, both both uh, both an uh, athlete and a regular student has, has a positive effects on entering the world. For sure. And uh, now talking a bit about like um, your family, your home. Um, how does it work for you, exam for you, Nick? Like when uh, you surely um, go home sometimes uh, during the year. How many times? How is it hard to stay away from your family? How do you stay in contact if they want to watch your games? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, so it is um, very difficult. I normally only go home. Um, for Christmas break, winter break, um, because I normally play um, summer league here, um, and then I go straight into preseason. So, yeah, it is difficult. I normally just keep um, keep in contact with my parents um, through text, and then I'll call them, FaceTime them multiple times um, a week. Um, but it is very difficult, especially I think now during during COVID times when you can't necessarily go out and do as much and you're stuck stuck at home most of the time. It, it is very difficult to, to not see your, your family. What about you, Marcel? You, of course, are from Boston. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be a bit easier to get home and stay in contact with your friends, your family, but of course, you're still far away. How does that work? Your, your parents make it to the games, your friends do. How, is it a bit different, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a completely different situation than you two. Um, 
I'm, I'm a three hour plane right away, so they, they can still make some games every now and then. They're still 13 hour drive, so kind of far, but if they, if they wanted to do it, they could. So the opportunity to see my parents is a lot more uh, frequent, and I can go home for breaks a lot more um, than obviously you and that, so it's, it's a lot different. For sure. Now, you, I heard you brought up the topic of uh, COVID 19. Uh, has this pandemic, how this pandemic affected your uh, your your life as a student athlete? Uh, there have been any changes in your lifestyle, uh, going to class, going to the gym, uh, just in general, how this pandemic has affected your your lifestyle here in, in across the Carolina? Yeah, so um, it affected us quite a lot actually because we. Um, or most schools couldn't have a, a full soccer season. We were lucky enough to only be one of 14 teams, I think, that were playing. But that obviously um, changed our, our whole season because now we have to play in the fall and the spring. Um, yeah, and basic, with basic lifestyle stuff, it's, we have to be extra careful because we test every week. So obviously if we get COVID, we could give it to our teammates and that means that we would, wouldn't be able to play a game. So it's just trying to be extra careful and basically just staying indoors a lot and wearing a mask and social distancing whenever we go out. So for you, Marcelo, maybe you heard from other people around the country. Is it the same at every college? Um, as Nick said, we've been lucky to play, but is it, is it a bit different for other people, other colleges? What do you think about this pandemic and how is it affecting college? Yeah, you know, I mean, in terms of our soccer season, I think we're only two conferences one or two conferences to play in the fall, so um, it was ACC and the Sun Belt, so we, we were lucky enough to play in the fall, so um, in terms of that, I guess it was a lot more different than every other conference in, in the country because they didn't get to play, they were just training in the fall. Um, in terms of a lifestyle, obviously you just restrict it to your bubble with your roommates and there's not much to do, like you can't even, it's not really like encouraging you to attend class in person, so it's you're, you're learning material online, which is obviously difficult, and to really retain information. Um, yeah, but in, in terms of that, like it's a lot different than a regular student that could maybe leave their bubble and uh, expose themselves to getting COVID. But if you do get COVID on a sports team, you're out for two weeks and then the recovery process is another week. So it's you kind of get into a long time. time. Yeah. Awesome. So moving up to the next question, um, I know you guys both both transferred to Coastal. I just wanted to uh, to know a bit about that process. Uh, for a normal student, surely uh, can be a bit easier, but because maybe uh, you just decide to change school and you just transfer. But how does that work for a student athlete? Because you don't have to just get the approval of school, but you have to get the approval of coaches and your team. How does that work in case, actually, when you transfer and you, in case in the future you'd like to transfer? Um, yeah, so I decided to transfer at the end of my second fall. Um, and I was actually planning on staying at that school for the spring semester, so I hadn't packed anything. Um, and then when speaking to college coaches, I got a very good offer from Coastal Carolina. It was a very good um, soccer program, and I seemed to, to enjoy the, the culture that was um, being described by the coaches. Um, but they wanted me to come that next spring, so it was a very rushed transfer process because I felt like I had to capitalize on the opportunity because maybe they would look for someone else who would be able to come in the spring if, if I wasn't going to. You have to make a quick decision. Yeah, yeah, a very quick decision. I had to leave a lot of um, clothes and um, items of mine back at my old university. I had to not say goodbye to a lot of my friends because I thought I was going to go back to that university. Um, but it was worth it. The, the, the transfer process coming in was very smooth and easy. Um, most of the teammates took me in quite comfortably and yeah, I felt good sense. And uh, talking more specifically about the process, uh, now we know that there's this uh, portal thing where you can get on and helps you through the process. Do you want to talk about a bit about that, Marcel? Does it work with, uh, with other coaches and other school? You get in contact with them. Yeah, um, I transferred after my first semester at my old university, and I think that was the first or second year they introduced the transfer portal. So the transfer portal was, in a sense, a good way because it gives you opportunities to reach out to coaches um, more consistently, I guess, that they, they have your email, they have your phone number, so the, the process is a, little, is a little bit more sped up, and you're not kind of waiting in the dark for the responses. So once you, 
once you talk to coaches, uh, two or three coaches, you can narrow down your list and then go visit that school if you get the opportunity and then go from there. But as Nick said, like uh, I transferred my second semester right away and I thought I was going to stay at home for a semester. So it was, it was, a, it was a speedy process, but it, it ended up turning out all right. And uh, in terms of transferring, like it's uh, the process of getting your transcripts approved and uh, your major, do they have your specific major? And uh, just the process of that was was good. So everything was good at both times. Um, in conclusion, I would like to ask, um, what's, the, what's uh, most student athletes' inspirations once they get out of college? We know some, some guys want to keep playing at a professional level. Um, do you think most of them do or most of them would just like to get a degree and get in the real world and, and get working? How does, how does that work if you, have, if you talk to your teammates or uh, athletes from different sports? What, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's something that everyone would like to do, but it is everyone knows I think how difficult it is at the same time. There's a lot of at student athletes who are looking to go to that next level, but there's only a small percentage who actually do. Um, so with that being said, I think a lot of student athletes then decide, you know, if if I can go pro, it would be nice, but at the end of the day I still have my degree to fall back on and I can use that to get a job and, and start working as soon as I'm done. Also, we know about the, um, the trouble to being a uh, foreign athlete. Um, in case you'd like to um, play professionally after your college, how does that work? Does that help you being a foreign athlete? Or uh, actually, it, uh, it is a bit of a, um, of a struggle to get in a professional team being a, 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 foreign, a foreign person? Um, so. In terms of um, being selected, I would I would say it's it can be um, it can be harder just because there's less roster spots available for foreign players, um, and it's it's also a bit difficult um, to go straight from college into into um, the professional leagues in America because they look at at foreign kids that are playing professionally somewhere overseas and. The level is a bit different when your your sole job is just to play a sport compared to when you're a student athlete, and you have to spend some time, you know, doing studying, doing homework, whatever. So, it is it is harder, I would say, than to be a to be a foreign athlete. And uh, Marcelo, what about you? Like, um, uh, we know America is a very competitive country in everything that you guys do. Um, is this something that is taught you to from a, like a young age in high school? To be comparing how you do sports or in, on your working career, how does that work? What's the inspiration once you get out of college? Yeah, I mean, everybody has a dream of playing professional, but the, the reality is not, not everybody gets to do it. So then you have the degree to fall back on and you use, you use the degree to, to move on in the real world where you're competitive in your workforce. But as you said, like growing up in America, sports is a, a sports culture is very big and you want to be the best in, it, in everything you do. So. I think they're gonna. I think everybody has that dream once you get to college that you want to play pro. But then the reality gets that you can't, and then maybe you you seek other career options at maybe a grad school while you're playing your own sport again. So, all right. Thank you, Nicolas. Thank you, Marcelo. I hope you guys can video can help you guys understand what's what's uh, what's more of a student athlete. Uh, what's the student athlete lifestyle? And uh, check the video out and hope you liked it. Oh, man.